I don't understand. Why did they leave me like this? So I went to the doctor's office. They are like, we were trying to save your life. My name is Andrea. I'm 41 years old. I'm from Texas. And my face got filleted like a fish in a car wreck. After high school, I started working at a bar, and uh, that's where I met Michelle, which she's still one of my best friends still today. I would say that was a fun time in my life. I used to think didn't stink. <laughs> we got dressed to go out one night, went out to eat. We got separated, and I was driving home. I went off to the right side of the road. My car flipped end over end two to three times, and I was found 20 feet from the car. I had shattered this cheek. I broke this one. I broke my jaw here, here, here. Split my palate in two, detached my nose, and shattered the orbits. So they put the palate back together, and there's plates up here. And then they had to build a skull, and then they built the face. When I went home, I remember looking in the mirror. I guess I always thought it was just going to, everything was going to be back together. It was, it was going to be, it was going to be back together, but it wasn't. I don't understand, why did they leave me like this? So when I went to the doctor's office, they were like, we were trying to save your life. I mean, I, I can't believe that they put me back together from what I saw that they had to work with. Well, when I was here and when I was here, I saw two of everything and I was on medication to breathe through my nose. I didn't go in public without sunglasses. If it was nighttime, I had sunglasses on. If it was daytime, I had sunglasses on. If I'm inside anywhere, I had sunglasses on. So I was at home one day and my friend's mom called and said, I saw on Sally Jesse if you were in a motor vehicle accident and disfigured your face to call. She said, you need to ask someone for help. So the next morning, I called the Sally Jesse show. And I was on the show the next Tuesday. Gently, gently. These are friendly people. And they're going to help you. OK. There you go. The show matched me with one of the best plastic surgeons in New York, and they paid for me to have my second surgery. They lifted my eye to where I saw one and also helped with my breathing. After that surgery, I actually felt better. I quit wearing the sunglasses. I went out and got a job. Even though I did have more confidence, I still wanted more surgery. I still wanted my nose fixed. So the third surgery, uh, the doctors actually gave me a nose. And you know what? It's really not so cute. It's too wide. It's kind of leaned over to the right, and I don't have a bridge. I want that nose that I, that I lost 20 years ago, I mean, without the bump. <laughs> First of all, look at that, that scar. It's so good. So here's that graft of yours right there. Be careful, stuff will squirt out. A voyeur. I'm out of bra. The junk that comes out of her eye when she blows her nose is pretty gross. <laughs> I'm going to have to say it's just gross. <laughs> Gotta say, Andrea, that's a new one. Your nose, that graft from your bone, from your skull, is crooked. It's off to the right. So we have to remove that gently. Reconstruct your septum, whatever's there, to get it straight. Andrea's surgery is going to be a complete overhaul. And who knows what I'm going to find in there. That's going to be a complete doozy. Swallow? OK. This is called a tracheocutaneous, the simple way is an adhesion. Your breathing tube is stuck to the skin. I wouldn't mind working on that for you. I can fix that scar on her neck at the same time as I fix her nose. Are you in? I'm in. Before my surgery, my face had been filleted in half from a car accident. After four reconstructive surgeries, I still wasn't real happy with my nose. It was too flat, too wide, and my nostrils weren't symmetrical. But now, thanks to Dr. Nassif, it's straighter, I have a bridge, and I have a profile. The daily reminders of my car wreck are less and less. Take us back. Tell us a little bit about the process you went through with your breasts. I have a family history of breast cancer on my mom's side. My mom was about my age that I am now when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. She had a lumpectomy, she had chemotherapy, and she's fine now. Oh. Given that history, you know, I finally broke down and did it, and sure enough, tested positive for the BRCA1 gene mutation. So you had the double mystic. Mm-hmm. And then once they finally let me go home, and I went back to the plastic surgeon for my one-week follow-up, and he undid the bandages, I had, it was just black. It was very scary looking. It was also because she had had the uh, nipple banking done. Tell us about the nipple well, banking. Well, that came about. It was kind of his suggestion. He said, I can take your nipples and bank them on your lower abdomen, and then come time for the implant exchange, put them back on my 
chest. I would say less than 2% of surgeons in this country use nipple baking because it doesn't work very well. My oldest daughter is 22, and my next oldest daughter is 17. Okay. And the fact that I did test positive for the gene mutation, it scares me. But also, I feel like at the state that I'm in, I don't feel confident enough to go to them and say, yes, you should get tested because look what happened to me, you know? It's been an emotional roller coaster for Maria, hearing that she will not talk to her daughters about being tested until she's fixed. That must weigh heavy on Terry. I mean, really, lives are at stake here. I'll make you a deal. If we get you to the point where you feel comfortable with your breasts, we immediately go back and have them tested for the BRCA gene. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's go have a look. Okay. Maria's case is particularly at high risk for a complication for any subsequent surgeries we may do on her. I will know more once we get into the exam room and see exactly where the scars are and the quality of the soft tissue and skin and get a better idea about the blood supply. We'd love to hear your story about your chin and your neck. Okay. So I went in to the doctor. He looked at my chin area and there was like a double chin and some loose skin. So he said that I should put an implant and I should get some liposuction around my face and stuff. What kind of doctor was he? He is a board certified um, plastic surgeon. Okay. Yeah. Two days after, um, he took the bandage off to see, and immediately um, there was like a little lump here, and then there was a ball here, and he said that this was scar tissue, and this, he wasn't sure what this was. Scar tissue after immediately after surgery? Scar tissue does not form that quickly after surgery. If Michelle had a wound problem, it was because the surgical procedure reduce the blood supply to the overlying soft tissue and cause the tissue to die. How's the feeling around here? This side is always a little bit tender, and that's where the he said the scar tissue was. He cut it out. That's why I have a scar going all the way up. Oh, he cut on the outside of your neck? This was the wrong procedure, the wrong approach, the wrong everything to do to Michelle. You don't put scars in the outside of the face. That's not the worst part. Uh-oh. On my last post-op, my appointment was really early in the morning, and I was waiting in the parking lot in the back, and there's this um, minivan that pulls up right next to me. This guy opens the door, falls out, and crawls over and starts pulling on my handle, and I notice that it's my doctor. Wait a minute, wait a minute. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Your There's doctor's a drug addict. I like rolled the window down and was like, um, do you need something? He's all let me in. And I was like, let me in. And I said, uh, and then he's like, just come inside, just come inside. He doesn't have shoes on. Oh. His hair is a mess. And Golden all nighter. We get in the facility and he's like, help me um, get one of his white jackets. There's no one in his office to help him? It's just um, the two of you alone? Just the two of us. But then a staff started coming in. He says, never speak a word of this. And I said, OK. Oh, boy. The doctor-patient relationship is one of the most sacred relationships in any profession. And when a doctor tells you, don't tell this to anybody. You understand because of the basic power structure between the doctor and the patient why Michelle didn't run out the door screaming. My name is Christina, I'm 40 years old, and I am the twin with the twisted nose. My nose looks like a hockey stick, very crooked. I loved to travel a lot when I was a kid. I think it had a lot to do with having an identical twin sister. We were a military family, and so we were never nervous about moving to a new town and making new friends, because we already always had our best bud moving with us. In 2005, I was T-boned on my left side. My car was crushed, and I had to be sawed out of my car. I sustained a lot of injuries. I had broken ribs. My left lung collapsed. My pelvis was shattered. The pain from my car accident was, was excruciating. I remember at one time staring at the ceiling, and I, I just wanted to die. After my accident, it took four or five years for me to notice that my nose was changing. It was twisting to the left, and I was having difficulty breathing. I went to go see an ENT, and he said more than likely I hit my face during that car accident, but then over time it slowly shifted. The ENT said that he would be able to do surgery on my nose. After my surgery, my nose was pretty good for a month. And then after the month, it slowly started twisting in the same direction it did after my car accident, but it was shifting farther. I was crying all the time. I was just miserable, and it's no way to live. 
And so I just told myself not to look at it, not to look in the mirror. And so from that day, I, I just stopped because I just didn't, you know, want to see it. I do a little bit of feeling your nose here. What we call the lower half of your nose, where all the cartilage is, uh -huh. is what's messed up. Basically, the doctor just took so much cartilage away yeah. that your tip, uh -huh. it's called the dome, deformed. With Christina's nose, we have another hard case here. Her septum is deviated in multiple directions, and this is why severe trauma, and bad surgery equals disaster. So what we have to do is, one, get your septum straight. We'll take down that little hump right here mm -hmm. and reconstruct the tip of your nose, the cartilage. And then we have to reconstruct the outside to make it look straighter. Awesome. Before surgery, my nose was curved like the end of a hockey stick and I had little self-worth. Now after surgery, Dr. Nassif gave me a nose that I'm not ashamed to look at in the mirror. And I feel good about myself for the first time in a long time.